Today on Locked On Rockies, one of the biggest surprises of the season, something that I don't think a lot of people saw coming, was an impressive season from Jonathan Daza. You are Locked On Rockies, your daily Colorado Rockies podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Rock on Rockies fans, welcome into the Locked on Rockies podcast for today, the 10th day of October in the year 2022. I am your host of the Locked on Rockies podcast, Paul Holden, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies podcast right here on the Locked on Podcast Network, where you can find your team each and every single day. And if your team is the Colorado Rockies, well, guess what? You are in the right place, because that's what we do around here is talk about the Colorado Rockies. Each and every single day, and I really love the. I love a lot. I love our listeners. Why? Because we've been having a, just great conversations. We had a, we worked through the season together, and now what do we do? We're going to work through the off season together. And you can stay up to date with everything we're doing if you follow the show on Twitter at LO Rockies, and if you follow the show on and subscribe on YouTube. You can be taken, uh, you, know, you can be part of the live chat. You can dive in. You can ask your questions live. Who am I? I'm your Rockies fan extraordinaire, Paul Holden. been following this team my entire life. been covering them here as part of the Locked On Rockies podcast for about two seasons. Well, a little over two seasons now here. Today on Locked On Rockies, we're going to begin our player reviews by taking a look at, uh, I would say, maybe the biggest if not one of the biggest surprises of the Rockies this year. And that was Jonathan Daza. And not a lot of flair going in for Jonathan Daza. There really wasn't uh, necessarily anything that you, – you didn't really think that Jonathan Daza was uh, going to do what he ended up doing this year. He was someone that you really wasn't sure the uh, what the what – the, um, uh, what the Rockies' plan was for him. He has uh, gotten better every single year since his uh, 2019 debut. wasn't uh, didn't do wasn't with the team in the 2020 shortened season, but since he's been given more games and more at bats, he's only increased all of his offensive numbers. And this year, when you compare it to last year. 107 games last year compared to 113 games uh, this year. Same number of home runs, but uh, nine more doubles for Daza. And uh, at least, let's see, what's that, 27 more hits for Daza in um, about a little under a little under 70 or so, maybe a little closer to 60. Uh, there's, it looks like a... About seven, actually, no, 77 more at bats for Daza in this year. So uh, he's got he got a little bit more action. So obviously that that's something that uh, you can attest to. But you see an increase in batting average from 282 to 301, and and, and just across the line when you're looking at uh, uh, the the batting line, an OBP in, uh, of uh, 332 in 2020 2021, uh, up to 349 in 2022. A slugging 355 in uh, 2021, up to a 384 slugging in 2021, and an OPS increase from 688 to 733. Uh, those are all great numbers. But another thing that's encouraging about Daza as well, it's not a big change. It's not a big shift. Two less strikeouts, though, in this year. In It's in a bunch more at-bats. I mean, that means he's he was seeing the ball better. He's gotten a better approach, and he's just in more dominant and control when he's up uh, at the dish. It's it's something that is very very important. He's his WAR last year uh, uh, in 2022 higher than his career WAR, at least according to Baseball Reference. He's really uh, someone that. Uh, needed to make a name for himself, needed to do something, and now has provided the Rockies with a really interesting spot in the lineup. It's it's, it's something that uh, I think you'll see the Rockies are going to use Jonathan Daza. And I, I don't necessarily think he's the strongest fielder. He's not necessarily, when we're talking about center field and filling that role and playing that position for the Rockies, 
He's not necessarily a dominant great defender, but he is a pretty good one. And he's had he does have good speed and he does have the ability to to, to track down plays and he's familiar with course field and, and can kind of play around there. Looking at uh, you know, some of his, his numbers here, definitely his spot was center field this year. Ninety two games with a 991 fielding percentage, a couple of errors there, but 208 put outs on, on 212 chances, a, a couple of, uh, of, of assists. Nothing, uh, you know, it's, it, like I said, there's nothing about his defense that's necessarily dominant, but it's, it's been something where the Rockies have discovered that out of the options, out of what the Rockies have from from some of their long term members of of this outfield, they know that Dobbs is kind of the one they can turn to. I think one of the Rockies that you have to kind of sit there and wonder as, as they went through this year and as Dobbs got better, how does that reflect when you're looking at say Sam Hilliard? Daza now has a chance to still be in the lineup when you're talking next year. He's the one that makes the most sense when Chris Bryant's going to mostly occupy left field. And then in right field, you have at least two options of what you want to do when you can have Randall Gritchick and Charlie Blackman. Again, not great defense there for the Rockies, but I would assume that's who the Rockies are going to turn to at most in right field. Leaving the Rockies confident in Jonathan Daza being their everyday center fielder, Maybe they might do some of the other, uh, you know, kind of platoon guys as well to, to, to rotate in. But out of those possible center field options, Jonathan Daza has proven that he's the one that deserves to be the, to have the most starts. And that includes so, over someone like Connor Joe. Unfortunately, that means people like Connor Joe are in situations where what is their role? And, and as, as cold as Connor Joe went in the second half of the season, what does that mean for the Rockies and their decisions going forward? Daza, two solid, strong years. I mean, even last year, you 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 still like what you saw. It wasn't necessarily anything uh, anything great, but he has got. But, but what the difference is between Daza and some of the others, uh, we'll we'll go through in reviewing is Daza is getting better. Daza has the potential to to continue to get better. He's increasing. He's getting better with more opportunities at the major league level. And that's something that you have to, that you value. And you look at as, 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 especially with someone who was going into spring training last year and you really weren't sure what Jonathan Daz's role was going to be with the Rockies. Very, very, I, out of, out of most of the Rockies, I would say Jonathan Daza is uh, one of my, uh, I would say, one of the most impressive Rockies of the year and is going to be, if he continues at this pace, if he can continue to be someone that is going to consistently get on base for the Rockies, that can, he might not have the power, but if he's able to hit 300, drive the ball in the gap and, 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 and hit some extra base hits, again, uh, this year, uh, 12 doubles on the year for him this, uh, this year. Uh, and a couple of triples for him. 30 RBIs. Would love to see him a little bit more involved uh, on the. Oh, actually, I'm sorry, I read the wrong year. 21 doubles this year. So that's not right. But still, the, uh, the the two triples, the two home runs, increases the RBI to to, to 34. Uh, one of the things that uh, we're going to dive into a little bit, some of the the the, the uh, coverage around Jonathan Daza, and I also wanted to highlight something that we saw this weekend. And uh, kind of show how important uh, this part of baseball is. It's something that uh, you know you you, you 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 don't think of as much, but it was on full display uh, this weekend here, especially in the Mariners game. Uh, but before we dive into all of that, the numbers don't lie. In the last decade, over four million people have chosen Simply Safe Home Security to protect their home. You don't earn the trust of that many people without doing something right. At Simply Safe, your safety is the only thing that matters. They protect you with cutting edge security technology powered by 24 7 professional monitoring agents who always have your back. With 24 7 professional monitoring, Simply Safe's agents call you the moment a threat is detected and dispatch police or first responders in emergency, even if you're not home or can't be reached. Simply Safe blankets your home in protection with advanced sensors for every room, window, and door. HD security cameras for inside and outside your home as well. Smart ways 
to detect motion that only alerts you when the threat is real and even hazard sensors that instantly detect fires, floods, and other threats to your home. Monitoring experts use prop proprietary advanced response technology to visually confirm when a break-in is real so you can get the highest priority police dispatch. Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash locked on MLB. Save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month free when you visit simplysafe.com slash locked on MLB to learn more. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Rockies reviews here. We're talking about Rockies center fielder Jonathan Daza. And let's head on over to Purple Row over here where Evan Lang writes, Jonathan Daza is passing his audition for an everyday outfield spot in 2023. At the beginning of the season, Colorado Rockies fans were left wondering what Jonathan Daza's place would be in a very crowded outfield. After scraping together limited major league playing time, the 28-year-old Venezuelan was ready to build on a solid 2021 campaign. Daza made the opening day roster after an excellent spring training, and a little over a month into the 2022 season, Evan himself was singing the praises for, his, uh, for him making the most of his playing time. Jonathan Daza has continued to build and improve his hitting profile. By the way, this was written uh, a little bit before the end of the season in September, so there was uh, you know, maybe a little bit of stuff that's a little dated, but that's okay. Young Gonzaga has continued to build and improve his hitting profile with every season he spent in the majors. After a brief cup of coffee in 2019 and missing 2020, Daza has a strong showing in 2021 with increased playing time. In 2022, he's an even better hitter than before with a career-high OPS of 752 at the time of writing this article, which was September 15th. Daza has improved in basically every standard hitting category. We already went through that and said that, yeah, that's indeed the case, and he did do that. Uh, he's got a high contact, low strikeout plate approach, which is so important for the Rockies. It's so important to have a guy on the lineup like Jonathan Dodson to have that approach at the dish. Not afraid to take a walk, gets his pitches and gets the strikeouts down. It's it's uh, watching Dodson compared to how some of the other players approached their at bats this year was was so refreshing, and it's kind of just saying. Well, I was just wondering why the other Rockies are having uh, issues uh, get, doing the same thing. It's, it, it's, it's really important for the Rockies to, uh, to strike out less. And when you look at compared to how this, uh, this article was written here, uh, when getting up to – he, he strikes out 12 more times since the writing of this article in September. So, not, you know, a few more strikeouts there. It's the end of the year. But um, – finished with 58 strikeouts this year so it's still down but you know they kind of at the at the end there was a, a little bit of an uptick there uh anyway daza is not going to be a power hitter we're back to evan langs both the announcer and daza himself expressed his surprise at the home run he hit against the brewers where daza excels at is making contact at the time of this article is 18.4 percent whiff rate is second lowest on the team behind jose iglesias despite having one of the higher chase rates on the team at 33.6 percent However, his rate of contact on chase pitches is a strong 69.1%, once again behind the Glacius, which limits his strikeouts at the trade-off of not drawing many walks. Yeah, that, you know, we kind of talked about it. It, it. He does chase. He's not walking a lot. The Rockies in general didn't really walk as much as I, I'd like them to. But uh, you wonder if Daza was a player that benefited from someone like Jose Iglesias, who looked like they have uh, two similar styles of play uh, when it comes to offense there so uh, there, there's an interesting little thing there it, it's just he keeps what's nice is everything you're talking about with with Jonathan Daza it is going to be uh it, it, the success is there the odd like, like Evan writes and like we said the audition is passed and he gives the Rockies a type of batter that they need and I know we've talked a lot about how, how much the Rockies need to be a more power hitting team as well you need to have players like Jonathan Daza in your lineup, especially in course field it, 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 and, and anywhere. Really, someone that can get on base that's going to get you opportunities. I mean, and, and he's going to need to fill this role, uh, as Evan also points out in the article. But but still, uh, with Jose Iglesias, I, I, I'm imagining not going to be with the Rockies next year, just like a lot of other people. He needs to be that uh, high contact, type of uh, player, the, the high OVP, low strikeout hitter as well. 
it is, uh, you know, it, it was an impressive second full season. He, he, Daza has taken the opportunity and hit the ground running. So I, I don't really know how to do my player rankings. I don't necessarily, I, I don't have a number or anything to put next to him. Ooh, excuse me there. Um, uh, but I, I just kind of wanted to just, I, I think I'm just going to profile the players and just kind of highlight them. I can give the like star ratings or whatever, but I don't think I'm necessarily going to do that. I'm going to kind of do impactful for the Rockies may or has still a position and kind of when you're looking at who's coming, who's going to contribute for the Rockies in the future, Jonathan Daza is going to be one of those people. Uh, I want to highlight the importance of of uh, one thing that was on display here uh, this weekend. It was a big uh, a big deal, and uh, it was a, a a big record when you are in situations like the Mariners, and that is the importance. Of winning the one run ball game and uh, the differences between the Rockies and a team like the managers uh, or the Mariners and some other uh, big teams as well. So before we do that, check this out. Locked on Rockies is free and streaming on your favorite streaming service. You can just search locked on Rockies and you're going to be taken to where you need to go. We'll be talking Rockies all off season long. And you can jump into the live chat if you see us live on YouTube. Just look up Locked on Rockies on YouTube. Hit subscribe. And, uh, yeah, let's flash back to August 27th. And this was uh, kind of the dog days, and there's uh, some more losses here for the Rockies in the meantime. But of the Rockies, 41 road losses, 13 have been one-run games. Rocks are 18 and 21 overall in those games of those 13 games 11 of them ended with opponents scoring the game winning uh, the game winning run in the eighth inning or later seven of those losses were walk-offs including friday's mets victory those one run ball games have been such a pesky thorn for the rockies your team is being is your team is successful when you win the one run ball game and there's no team that that is a better example of than the Seattle Mariners. The Seattle Mariners uh, are a team that won over 30 game, one-run games this month, or not this month, this year. 30. That is huge. That, is, that means when the Mariners needed to come up clutch, when the Mariners either needed to come back from big down big and get just the one run, their team is constructed in a way that you have confidence in your team to win the close one, to win the gritty games. Whereas the Rockies, no lead ever felt safe this entire season. To be clutch, to make it back to the playoffs, to win big, to beat teams like the Dodgers and the Padres, who are still in the playoffs, you have to win the one-run game. And, and I know that's just a small sample size, but you know who, but looking at teams that made the playoffs, the teams that had the best records against or in one run ball games, the Toronto Blue Jays follow the Mariners, the San Diego Padres follow the Mariners, the Yankees follow that. What do all those teams have in common? What do all those teams have in common? They're playoff teams. They're good playoff teams. They're teams that. That could have made an impact. I know the Jays and the Mariners ran into each other there, and but these are all teams that are 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 making a splash in the playoffs. I guess outside of the Blue Jays, the Yankees have their first opportunity to do so now. But that's what you need to be. You need to be multiple games above 500. When you are that far above 500, like the Mariners and like the Padres and like the Blue Jays and the Yankees were this year. That means you have the pieces working. You have the, the team built to handle the pressure and the stress and the length of a season because those games add up. Those games add up quickly. 13 one-run games for the Rockies. Uh, that has been uh, – that was brutal. That was a brutal stretch for the Rockies. And it's, again, another 
would have, should have, could have moment for the club uh, when they desperately needed to, uh, to 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 be better. It's a uh, it's it's something that we need to see. Uh, we need to see more. I mean, and when we we will know the Rockies' offense is working better. We will know the Rockies are in a better spot offensively and have a more trustworthy bullpen when the Rockies win more one run games instead of being on the losing end. How many games do we see the Rockies blow and lose late? We, like we were talking about in that Patrick Saunders tweet there from uh, August. So one thing the Rockies also need to do to be successful again is to win the one run ball game. And, uh, Folks, I think that's going to do it for today. I think we're going to wrap things up here as uh, we start our off season uh, here together. Follow along with us on Twitter at LO Rockies. You can follow me at Paul Holden 33. Make sure you subscribe to Locked On Rockies on YouTube so you know when we go live. We'll be talking about our player reviews here for a bit, looking back on more things that uh, we hope to see from the Colorado Rockies as we uh, move along through the off season. Dick Montfort says the uh, four-year playoff drought is unacceptable in his, in his uh, letter to fans. We'll talk more about that and all things Colorado Rockies here on the Locked On Rockies podcast. Now that you made us your first listen of the day, why don't you make Locked On MLB your second listen of the day and stay up to date with all things Colorado sports with the Locked On Broncos, Locked On Avalanche, and Locked On Nuggets podcast. All righty, folks. We'll be back in action tomorrow with more Rockies talk right here on the Locked On Rockies podcast. This is Paul Holden. Thank